Hi, I'm Julia Cordova. Thank you very much for subscribing to my trading YouTube channel. So today I'm just going to go through a bunch of charts and uh, see what we all think about them. And I just want to say um, before we start, I have a little bit of a cold. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not virus ridden to my knowledge. But um, I stuck some, my, my girlfriend from fifth grade, my best friend from fifth grade, her mom told me to put um, some swabs in vodka and then put them up my nose. And um, I think it actually helped. I, I haven't taken any medicine or anything like that, but I feel a lot better. But I don't know if I snorted vodka or not. So we're gonna just have to see how this goes. And hopefully um, I don't lose any of you from this. But okay, let's talk about charts. Okay, so. Uh, all right, I thought I would start by talking about Nete, natural gas, because it's so interesting um, to me. So, um, wow, so Natty, uh, Natty has been doing all sorts of things. As you can see, I mean, once, if, you, if you're able to catch a trend in it, I mean, it's, it's pretty good if you can catch the right end of a trend. It's just the issue is there is so much volatility within these trends that, you know, it, it, it's not for the faint of heart. So if you're a beginner trader or somebody who's just like uh, not into pain and all sorts of things like that, I would recommend against it. But I like to talk about it because it's interesting to me. So um, I, I like to talk about it because it's, got and it's also got like signs here so there's you can see that natty had some bull divergence here that it just completely ignored and uh again some bull divergence here that, that that happened for a little bit we got a little something something from that and we had marked off a key which is a little mini key excuse me not like a big ass key but like a mini key here and uh, anyway, originally I had hoped that when it back tested this green channel, it, it would form this, what I put as light blue head and shoulders. That got busted, you can see here. But what happened in the course of that is perhaps, perhaps it might be forming a larger head and shoulders. So maybe I didn't make this oval big enough when I wanted to say it would repeat itself. Now, it also, I mean, it's not an ascending triangle, right? Because an ascending triangle would have it going like in the opposite direction it's going. But Natty's, I mean, it looks like you've got a clear, we've got a clearly defined resistance here. If you want to wait till it's above uh, 1.985, which is the mini key, I think it's a relatively smart long above that point because it has tried several times to get above it and can't so if it can get above it that's a good place to enter for people uh that would that would be my recommendation not financial advice Duh. but that would be my recommendation for somebody who is cautious or waiting to add a second or third scale um so right now I'm one scale in. I have sold at the mini key before, and then um, I wanted to buy back here when it got uh, here. I was thinking about scalping, uh, but it didn't didn't get there uh, on Friday. So, and it closed above where it was on Thursday. But I, yeah, look at Natty being Natty over here. Just I mean, it's all it's. You can see right now it's consolidating and that makes it very hard to swing in my opinion. You know, buying at this green channel, I don't think is ever a bad idea because even if you just like, as long as it really doesn't close below it for, you know, more than a few days in a row, it's okay, but it doesn't matter. That's just my style. So let's see what this coming week brings, whether or not we do in fact, uh, form a head, another shoulder, whether or not it just goes straight the front down. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, or whether or not we can get above this ambulance and then get to the mini key line and above the mini key line. I'm going to like it. I'm going to like it a lot. Um, it's got this gap. To f well, it already filled that gap actually, but it's got the, the resistance and this uh, to get past for that gap. And then we do have another gap way up here. Now it doesn't have to fill. 
Y'all know how I feel about that, but it doesn't have to fill. Um, but that's around 2.71, and wouldn't that be delightful? But you know what? We don't know, and it could be forever and ever. It could be like a really long time. One other, I mean, I don't know how you guys are playing Natty, whether it's futures or some sort of ETF, but I would also suggest a less leveraged ETF while it's in the poop machine, which is what it is now. While it looks really terrible, um, a less leveraged ETF might be the way to go. Okay, so that is Nette. I, I just find it fascinating, and I know I probably lost a lot of people just now, but that's okay. Whew. Let's look at ES or uh, futures for the S and P. Um, yeah, wow, we had a week, didn't we? Um, pretty much closed right on the what I. Uh, this is a weekly chart we're looking at. Pretty much closed right on the financial crisis bottom channel. Mm. Mm. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, it was a long tail that it put in. I didn't think it would because I personally like a little more um, uh, mystery to a week close. I, I like a little, uh, oh, what's going to happen next week? And I guess it is in a way because it's not a hammer, It's but it was it's a large... Uh, candle tail and that means to me that probably this next week is going to be uh, a lot of drama um, but it's hard to say which way honestly um, but yeah it's hard to say which way uh, I am expecting it at some point I was expecting it and I mean yeah I, I still expect it at some point to test the election night low um, I happened to be long volatility that night. I was happy, so happy. I was so happy that night. Like I was like, I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be rich. And, um, I had to get up really early in the freaking morning to, uh, to, to claim some of my profits on that. I tell you what, I did not make that the best trade because I kept thinking, Oh no, it'll go back and test that low. It'll go back and test that low and it never did. For me, it's really weird when it, when a major event like that happens and it doesn't happen during uh, US market hours. It always seems to me like it, it should retest at a time when there's more liquidity so we can really know. And it just never did. So um, at some point I still do, and maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, it's possible, it's definitely possible. But I just some point except expect it to uh, test that low during U.S. market hours, but we'll have to see. And uh, I wouldn't expect it at all to go straight back up at this point. Um, and and uh, I'm saying that you know I'm a chart person, but I mean um, I know it takes some time for. Uh, I mean, for things like a, a, a vaccine or um, a treatment to be put through uh, all sorts of clinical trials and manufacturing and that sort of thing. And I used to work in a, in a field that um, I had a lot of exposure to the drug discovery and drug development and clinical processes. And uh, um, yeah, I, I would I would just I mean, certainly there'll be rumors and there'll be good feedback and there'll be um, combinations of treatments that will be very effective. But um, I don't know that a silver bullet will come to us overnight. Um, and so I would not expect in general a huge uh, just reversal. But you know what? Look at that pretty gap there. I had often said that the most bearish thing, even though I was long volatility when all this was happening, I said the most bearish thing would be to come back and fill this gap and then go down because then, you know, ah. Ah, that's a big gap and it's and it got left so um, I, ex I definitely expect it to also fill that gap at some point so between filling this gap on the weekly and daily and going back to the election night low um, other than just watching levels uh, you know I am still a bit bearish for this week I don't know if we'll make a new low but I'm a bit bearish at least at the beginning of the week and then we'll just have to see what happens um, okay, so let's look at the daily. Ah, um, so this is, this is cute. I had marked off a gap before and it, that the low of the candle did, I mean, that's very, very close. Um, you can see some bullish divergence here. 
But if you were kind of bearish, like I had been uh, since September, um, you know, it we ignored a lot of bearish divergence for a really long time. We just ignored it. We're just like, la, 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 like, la, la. La, la 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 and um yeah so uh we ignored it we ignored the the bearish divergence i wonder if we'll ignore the bullish divergence for a while it's it's hard to say i mean this um this rsi kind of looks a little bear flaggy to me but there's not a whole lot of space for it to go although once it gets into this oversold territory it does go into turbo mode but again this was quite the candle i was i was not expecting this on friday it was quite the candle um so maybe it'll carry over some momentum and uh we can see where that goes i just um i don't know i haven't my friends that are asking me if um if if they should now start investing nobody nobody's really come to me and go oh my god you know what's happening now nobody's really panicked to me but they've said okay well now should we put some in? everybody seems just i know there was pa some panic but everybody just my in my life around me they seem very measured okay well i've squirreled away some money is now the time i'm like oh my goodness um, not if you're asking me. If you're asking me if you want to sell everything, then yeah, I'll put it all in. Uh, but no, I, um, I don't know. I do not know. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't have, I've got to start drawing in some downtrend lines. There weren't a lot in here because, uh, we were only going up for pretty much since I've been trading. So, so, uh, that probably explains why I don't have a whole lot of downtrend lines. Um, I had drawn in, uh, this line before where I, I pulled it from somewhere else and, uh, yeah, we kind of cut right through it. Although it was cool that we cut right through it at a point where I had intersected it with another line, but, um, um, ba -dum -bum -dum. I'm going to say that's probably my new fat lady has sung and left the building line. If we close below it again, that would be bad, in my opinion. So I'll mark that off as a pivot. Here we go. Yeah, so like 25, 21 or so, something around there. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact on my charts. I just, especially because there's so many other people that I feel like chart ES a little bit better than I do. Um, but yeah, that's, that's sort of where I'm at right now. I'm still not thinking that this whole thing is, is going to just go away very suddenly. So one thing might be to, and I did tell somebody on Friday, um, that, you know, they, I would, I was comfortable with them scaling in at that time, as long as they put in a stop, but they were not, they're not sophisticated, uh, investors. So they're like, what's a stop? I'm like, Oh, <laughs> uh, um, well, talk to your broker about that. But anyway, um, yeah, so that's what we're doing now. And let's look at gold. So gold, uh, uh, uh see, I, the market's already rolling here, but Gold just, I had said that if gold closes above the key, I'd like it to close way above the key. Um, the, the more above the key, the better for bulls. And it looks like it just perfectly back test it, it what got below the key. And then on this candle here, it back tested the key pretty perfectly. And now it's just going. So um, it has a limited period of time here to not get below this gap support. What? Uh, 1504 and get back above the key. And if it can do that, that'll be a false breakout. And if it can't do that, then bad, 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 very bad. And uh, I'm just gonna make this smaller. Um, my head might be in the way, but um, those, uh, those are actually all the pink lines that I have from the last gold breakout there. So um, if it can get above it, it's got some free space, but that's just a lot of pink lines together. That's what I meant when I said before that it, that it's got to like go back and forth, I think pretty substantially to sort of get the momentum. It does have a higher high here, but it does on, on some serious divergence and, um, gold, unlike Natty, um, does typically pay attention to divergence. So there's that. Now let's look at silver. Okay, 
Silver closed the day exactly on one of my, on Friday, exactly on one of my lines here. And uh, I didn't talk about it much though because um, it didn't have a really nice, it didn't have hardly any of a tail. It just, I mean, look at that day. Womp, like, womp. So let me just put in a pivot right here so we can all see it because this is another line that we were watching from the time we started uh, our gift line here. You know what? Let's make another gift line. Why not? Okay. Oops. I like it. I like it. Second chances. Okay. So, um, got this pivot here. Let's make it bigger. So I don't mess this up. There we go. Okay. So about 14.75 if we wanted to get back to that. It, I don't know if it'll go back today um, or Monday. I mean, 14.46. Uh, and then, uh, oops, I've got this pink line marked off. That was the M that was a wheelchair line at some point. 15.10. So, um, those are the pivots that I am watching for silver. I will be bummed if I missed it again. Those of you probably remember, um, uh, way back in the day, I was really hoping that, um, it would go back and I mean, it did actually touch my wheelchair line and then just take off and I missed it cause I wasn't watching it that day but I had published before. If it hits a wheelchair, I would buy it. Um, but I ended up buying it on the flag breakout, which is a smart thing to do. And, uh, you know, potentially, I don't know if we're going to form a bear flag here. I don't know if we're going to go up and form another bull flag. Who knows? But um, I just wasn't comfortable bottom caching it there because I like to see... Um, tails on my candles. I just, otherwise it feels like I'm just, it really does feel like I'm catching a knife. And I know as risky as I probably seem to a lot of you and gambling and stuff, I'm, not, I'm really not like, why would somebody's like, why would, why would you put your, you know, why would you put yourself out there and say your trades and stuff? I'm like, because they're pretty good because like they're tried and tested and true. I'm not a gambler to that extent. So as much as I would love to catch the bottom of things, mm, like I just don't, I just wasn't comfortable. I wasn't comfortable. But, uh, you know, um, I believe in, um, and it is also right now hitting uh, resistance here. So we'll have to see if what it does in the course of the day. But you can see it's hitting RSI resistance, right, as I'm talking here because it gapped up. Ah, or not gapped up, but I mean, it didn't open the same place it closed. So I don't know what that's called. If it's in the middle of the candle, I don't know. Probably on some time frame it gapped up, but not on the daily. So, hmm. That's all the non-smart stuff I have to say about silver. Let's talk about oil, the weekly. Um, this is just a... a a weird thing to have happened. Um, if you, I mean, if I look through all the weeks of oil, um, I, this is a huge gap, huge, huge gap. Um, so yeah, it's, I, I just wasn't comfortable messing with it last week. I didn't know where it was going to stop. I, I, you know, I, I would love to say, I know everything that I, I just, I, it, it was confounding to me. And again, I would rather not trade if I don't understand things because um, if I do understand things, I feel like my odds are, the odds are in your favor. But if I don't understand things, I would rather just not say anything. Like, you know how they say, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Like usually if I can't say anything constructive, I will try not to say anything at all. I just don't know. I just don't know. But um, anyway, uh, if this was in fact a head and shoulders, oops, Hey, stop. Um, then I did a measurement here from the neckline to the top of the head. And I think you're supposed to, according to the pattern site, you're supposed to multiply that by 51% and then measure it down here. And uh, I think when I did the math, it was uh, 25 and change from, from this value or from 
this measurement if I did it correctly. I don't really, I don't really put too much stock in that stuff, but um, it came pretty close. It, it came pretty close, but I just, again, I wasn't comfortable. I would just rather wait till I know something. So as much as I would like to call myself the bottom catcher master of the universe and catch this, uh, maybe I missed the bottom. It's it, definitely it's possible because I just, I just, I did it. Mm -mm, I, I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the way it looks. So um, I'm just waiting, and not that it's not gonna go straight up, it might, I don't know. But um, for my style and what I'm used to looking for, it just, it doesn't mesh well, and so uh, I'm just not comfortable with it uh, right now. That's why I'm not trading it. So maybe the lesson to be learned is, is if you don't see something you like, or if you don't see it in the way that you like it, it's okay not to trade it because there's places to be made uh, there's money to be made in other places. And let's look at the four hour though, because maybe that's more instructive. Um, I actually, uh, you know, this key line has been working for us really well. I put in a new mini key line. Now I know it doesn't look like it's lined up with the top of the candle, but I'm okay with that. Like I know what I'm doing. So anyway, it's my new key line. Oops, except for I don't have this marker in the right place. Um, it's my new key line mini key that means it's not necessarily uh bullish above here the key lines in my charts usually are bare bull fulcrums um, but if i put in a mini key it means like okay from above that line there's a good chance of uh, what i call a mixed squeeze or or above that line potentially a lot of bears would be forced to cover i think of that as if i were bearish where i would cover where i would be like uh oh this this could go bad so um We'll see. Uh, we'll see if it gets above this key line. If it does, I will probably look to buy some and make some money. And I will, I will, in all likelihood, um, publish that trade on Twitter uh, because why not? I like you guys. Um, and um, oh, that's it. Oh, I forgot to talk about. It. See, I did snort some vodka. I'm going back to gas now. Natural gas. Um, I talked about the. Uh, bullish divergence here that had been ignored, well, bullish divergence here that it was ignoring, bullish divergence here that it kind of did. Um, it also had some hidden divergence here where we have a lower high, um, and I'm looking at where the candles close here to do the divergence, and but we have a higher RSI. I like it. I like natural gas. I like the fact that I've seen a lot of really strange volume happening in it recently. So um, yeah, I like that. That one's my favorite play for this week other than ES, which I will be just, I'm not a fortune teller. I don't know what's going to happen. I really just have day-to-day -day visibility in it if I'm being completely transparent with you. I, I can usually look at it and kind of know, okay, this is my feeling for tomorrow or this is my feeling for today but I don't have anything beyond today and tomorrow. Like, I don't know. And I would, I would just be completely guessing if I were to tell you I thought I know what would happen. I just have no idea. And I'm not sure that anybody knows, but you know what? People have a 50-50 chance of getting it right, I guess. I just don't even want to tell you that. I don't know. But anyway, I'm sorry I'm sick and I'm sorry if my vodka snorting um, caused any disruption to charts, but I thought I would just uh, tell you what I thought and hope you're having had a great weekend and hope you have a great week. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye.